On the front page of the Business Courier this week, what do entrepreneurs go through to make their passion a reality? Well, our reporter, Andy Brownfield, found out, and he wrote about it in this week's Centerpiece front page story when he became the 54-hour entrepreneur. Andy was one of 25 people pitching before a crowd of 48 people at Startup Weekend Cincinnati last weekend. This is the fifth time this event has been held in Cincinnati to bring attention to the vibrancy of the local startup community. All 25 participants had to bring ideas, but ended up narrowing them to 10 and working together in groups. The teams worked almost nonstop to come up with a viable product pitch by the end of the weekend. But what's probably most valuable about this weekend is the exposure to startup ecosystem in Cincinnati and networking with other entrepreneurs. More often than not, what you'll see is individuals will meet other people who might actually end up being their co-founder, or they'll have kind of this inkling or seed of an idea that, that is born this weekend that might transform pretty drastically, um, but could eventually become a viable company. The idea pitched by Andy Brownfield's team, by the way, came in second. The winning idea came from Nick Lingenfelter, but he says he has a wife and a baby on the way, and he just doesn't have the time right now to quit his day job and take a chance on a startup. And that's a reaction that is heard frequently. So even when you have an idea that seems to be supported, how do you begin to develop the courage and the resources to take the plunge and get this thing off the ground? Rye Walker was one of the co-organizers of Startup Weekend and has coached teams in the past. He joins U.S. Bank Business Watch producer Kelly Leon in the studio with some insight. Kelly and Rye? Thanks, Brian. Thanks for being here, Rye. Oh, my pleasure. So how do you get the courage? I can certainly understand Nick. He has a wife and a baby on the way. He's saying, uh, I can't give up my day job. Yeah. Um, I, well, I personally made the leap last year back into a uh, entrepreneurial situation, um, quitting a perfectly good job. Uh, and um, I, th I think... Uh, it's, it is definitely a tough thing, especially with uh, a spouse uh, that's uh, carrying a child. But um, uh, what, the way we did it and the way I did it was to, to basically do it a little bit gradual, maybe find some consulting work on the side that can serve as a, a bridge to um, a new um, full-time job, uh, or I should say uh, a company that you're running. Company, yeah. And um, yeah, so that's uh, that bridge, that bridging effect can go a long way, but ultimately you just have to have faith in your own ability to, to build something. Yeah, and maybe even listen to your gut you know, to, when the time is right. I, I think weekends like this, and we were talking about it, what a great opportunity this is to just explore your ideas, explore your network, and then um, it may not happen right out of this weekend. True. It might happen down the road? Is yeah, in fact, I, I attended the very first startup weekend in January of 2012, and it wasn't until July that my arrangements were set up to, to actually quit my job, so it was six months later. And for our community, why is it important to have these kind of weekends? I know you guys do them maybe twice a year, and why is it important? Well, I think it's a really safe way to, um, to get the full experience from uh, coming up with an idea, forming a team, um, the interpersonal issues around a, a startup, um, maybe even firing a person during the process. Uh, but at the end of the day, at the end of the process, you have a, uh, a lot of fulfillment in, in having created something with a pe group of people you didn't know beforehand. And it's just, it's amazing to compact that all into just a weekend. Yeah, okay. Well, great job and thanks for being here. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs>